What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube. Today I'm going to be talking about a controversial word that I put out on social media and I always get a lot of heat back and that word is submission. This word has really gone a bad reputation, but why? Okay, so let's dive into what it means and let's talk about why the word is so cringe to women today. I think that a lot of women have poor examples in their own relationships and also poor role models, right? So what they have seen growing up from their parents, from their mom, it has really shaped their perception of how relationships should go. And then on top of that, they're not raised with any spiritual guidance or they reject spiritual guidance altogether, okay? So even if feminism wasn't around, let's say feminism never was around, we would still be dealing with a battle between the sexes. And you can see that on social media today. You can see the gender wars. And there's a lot of people that don't believe in feminism, but there's still gender wars. So we can't blame things on just women or just feminism. We really have to see things at all as a whole and understand that people are rejecting God's purpose and design for humans. And that is what is really causing the fallout between men and women. You know, we could, we could pull up in the Bible, the very first, you know, humans ever created Adam and Eve rejected God. They did exactly what humans are doing today. I can do it better. I know better. This attitude, this air of arrogance and pride is what has always been the fall for humans from the beginning. We are not equal, okay? We are distinctly different. And the more that we try to say, no, we can do everything like men, and we don't need to listen to men, the more we work apart, okay? We don't work in unity. The whole point of gender roles, the whole point of our roles that were distinctly designed by God was to blend together and work together to bring unity. So the more that we think that we are the same and we can do it ourselves <laughs> and we don't need to listen to anybody, the worse things get. And I want to go into this video clip. So let's watch this. We're living in a culture that is making a complete effort to destroy men, to destroy women, to destroy children, to destroy families, to destroy marriage. This is an all-out massive assault. They want nothing to do with the Word of God, or they wouldn't be advocating the things that they advocate. God has designed men and women differently, and of course, this culture wants to overthrow all of that with a level of insanity that shocks us all. But the headship of the man is built around this notion, and this is how you have to look at it. Not smarter, not wiser, not more experienced, not more insightful, not more spiritual, not more valuable. It is simply that God designed men to be physically stronger, constitutionally designed by God to work, to protect, to provide for, to secure the wife whom the Holy Spirit calls in 1 Peter 3, 7, the weaker vessel. Not weaker intellectually, not weaker mentally, not weaker in wisdom or any virtue at all, but merely by God's design. We get that. That's why there's such a furor when men want to participate in women's sports. Anybody gets that. It's obviously not a possible compatibility because men have a completely different system that makes them stronger than women. It's really nothing more than that. And so by divine design, Colossians 3.18 says it is fitting. It is fitting. It has always been this way. It's an, it's an imperfect, active, indicative. It's always been like this. It's always been this way that men have been designed by God to be the providers, the protectors of women. So sadly, there is an all-out attack on men, women, children, marriage, God, the Bible, everything that was the intent, the original intent, there is an all-out attack. And you can see this all over the world right now. You can see how 
people stepping outside of what God intended has really brought chaos to this world. There's wars, there's division, and it's not going to stop because unfortunately what we have is people who think they know better than God. So they've rejected spiritual guidance. They respect, re rejected the Bible. Anything that creates any, any order, they rejected it. And you have arrogance, you have pride, you have people who just are not humble. They don't want to hear anything. They think they are doing it fine just on their own. And they keep failing and making mistakes and they will continue to fail and make mistakes with that attitude because it's very clear in the Bible that we need humility. And I want you to go ahead and uh, hear this next video. If you're going to subject yourselves to others, you're going to have to humble yourself. You're going to have to distance yourself from selfishness and conceit. And you're going to have to regard others as more important than yourselves. Verse 4, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. And then he gives an illustration of Christ. This kind of subjection to one another is the spirit described in Philippians 2. It's a humble spirit. It's a selfless spirit. It lacks the marked conceit of the unregenerate and willingly considers others better than itself and serves others before it even serves itself. Now, that is a spiritual command. Spiritually speaking, we're not talking about roles and functions. We're talking about the essential nature of believers in their relationships. We submit to each other. We subject ourselves to each other. The wife, we'll find out, subjects herself to her husband. She recognizes his headship in the home. On the other hand, the husband subjects himself to the wife by recognizing her needs and self-sacrificing to make sure they are met. Um, I think it's like explaining to somebody how a hammer works when they've never built anything with their hands. If they've never actually experienced a thriving relationship or a thriving marriage, and every single experience they've ever had with the opposite sex has been negative, that's going to shape how they perceive relationships. It's going to shape how they move going forward. And a lot of times people just set up boundaries because of how they've been hurt in the past. And those boundaries are not helping them move forward with that person. It's just building walls up. If you see in 1 Corinthians 11, 11 through 12, it says in God's plan, women need men and men need women. So that is why innately, instinctively, we want a companion in life, right? We want marriage, but unfortunately, we want to cherry pick when to do things the right way and when not to, right? We want to cherry pick what's good for us at the time versus doing what's beneficial for the both of us. And that's why relationships keep failing. Um, let's, let's watch this video, why women cherry pick when they want to listen to their husbands and when they don't. So if you are a woman and you feel like your husband irritates you and you, you just don't feel like always complying with what he wants, um, you came by this basically because of Eve. She did this to the women, and Adam followed suit. But back in Genesis 3, when Adam and Eve had sinned, God cursed the woman, women in general. Verse 16 of Genesis 3, the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. Is that true? Is that a reality? Of course, every woman who's ever had a child affirms that. So that's a validation of Scripture. Yes, that's true. In pain, you will bring forth children. And then there's a second part of it. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Now, what does that mean? Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. It says in verse 7, middle of the verse, sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you, but you must master it. It's the same phrase. Whatever sin wants to do is what the woman wants to do. It's not a desire that's physical. It's not a desire for intimacy that's being referred to here. It's a desire to overthrow. 
It's a desire to dominate. That's what sin wants to do. And you must master it. You can't let sin master you. You must master it. Its desire is to overpower you. Same exact phrase, speaking of women. The desire for women will be to overpower the man, and he must rule over you. Well, that leads to rebellion in a marriage and and even a kind of hostility on the part of the husband who is struggling to rule. That's the conflict in marriage. You have women innately in their fallenness not wanting to submit, and you have men in their fallenness wanting to dominate, and that's the battle of the sexes as it's known. So you can see through imperfection, through the very first sin of Eve, that set a snowball of consequences for women and men today, right? I I want to talk on, you know, Philippians 2, 3, 4 says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in the humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. So the only way that we are ever going to do right is if we make those sacrifices and we do nothing out of selfish conceit. So this gets down to why submission is so important. Submission is respectful cooperation. That's what it is. Without submission, relationships don't work. There is always an order. There's always a chain of command. If you look at everything that we see, anything at all, the way a car functions, the way a vegetation grows, there's an order. And if you take that out, if you remove that order, things don't function. Things don't work well, okay? Submission is not weakness. A lot of women hear submission as obedience or domination because they don't understand the origination of the word, where it actually came from. Notice it doesn't say, wives, obey your husbands. That's for children, chapter 6, verse 1. That's for slaves, chapter 6, verse 5. Obedience. This is a softer word. Be subject to your own husbands. Subject to your own husbands. There's a sense in which you own your husband. He belongs to you which then obviously connects the fact that it benefits you to treat your husband the way God wants you to treat your husband. Submission is simply respectful cooperation. It is simply being a helper to your man. Just as God is a helper to men, you are a helper to your man for him to go after his goals. In the Bible, obedience is directed to children, Notice it doesn't say, wives, obey your husbands. That's for children, chapter 6, verse 1. That's for slaves, chapter 6, verse 5. Obedience. Two completely different words. Dominance was a product of sin. It came after sin, okay? Men will, in their fallenness, want to dominate. So, Submission is not dominance. Submission is not obedience. Those are two completely different, distinct things. Submission is respectful cooperation. You are a helper to your man. It is a positive thing. It is a needed, most important thing in a relationship. And and something that often gets very missed on social media is we always want to talk about women submitting, but we have to remember that men submit as well. Men submit to God. So there will be authority and there will be submission in function. There has to be. Children to their parents, wives to their husbands, congregations to the elders, citizens to the government, etc. For order in human society. We submit to each other. We subject ourselves to each other. The wife, we'll find out, subjects herself to her husband. She recognizes his headship in the home. On the other hand, the husband subjects himself to the wife by recognizing her needs and self-sacrificing to make sure they are met. If 
a man asks his wife to do something that is sinful in nature, how should she react? If, if, cause I get this a lot on social media. Oh, what if he asks me to do something that I don't agree with, or I think I know better? Well, let's watch this. If you want to win over a, a disobedient husband, the way to do that is to show what verse two describes as respectful behavior. So there's really no way out of this. Obviously, if your husband asks you to sin or asks you to sin in such a way that you're not permitted to do what you know God has commanded you to do, you have to claim Acts 5 and say, well, you judge whether we obey men or God. You, you can't ask me to violate my allegiance and devotion to Christ. And I think this is very important. The end of verse 6, you do what is right without being frightened by any fear, without being intimidated. When you do what is right, who's on your side? God's on your side when you do right. And again, it just calls for you to do the right thing and trust God. So in, so I'm going to say one last time, in a relationship, submission is needed and it brings respect. Without respect, there is not a relationship. Without a relationship, there cannot be respect. So everything has an order and humans complicate their life when they choose to say, I'm not going to follow that order. I'm going to do it my way. My way is better. I know more than God. That is when they complicate things. And we can see that all over today. So I'm just going to wrap up the video. I hope this was insightful. I'd love to get your feedback down below. I'd love to, you know, hear more on what other videos you want. I think going forward, you know, things we have to understand that women are not doormats. Men are not tyrants. We are not the enemy of either. The whole purpose of marriage and roles within a male and a female dynamic was to work into unity. Okay. That's where they were designed to do. And that's what brings unity. If we want to step outside those roles, if we want to continue to work against each other, we're going to continue to have division. That's it for today, guys. Thank you again for listening and I'll see y'all next time.